how's it going? I'm Jay Byrne, and this is a new episode of The Effects Loop. Today, we are talking about Fender Deluxe Reverb Tone Master. Why? Because I got one. <laughs> Back to the Tone Masters again, but I am going to say straight off the bat at the beginning of this demo, review, whatever you want to call it, just a video about the Fender Tone Master Deluxe Reverb. I really feel that this Deluxe Reverb is the sweet spot of the line for the Tone Masters. I feel like you can, like I've had, I had a Deluxe Reverb uh, reissue, an actual tube, a couple years back. And I had it for a good year or so. And I loved it. It was awesome. It sounded amazing, it played amazing, but then it started to give me problems, so... Which probably at the time it was just tubes, but I don't know what the issue was. But I sold it and, you know, went down the rabbit hole of trying to find other things. I can say with extreme confidence that this Tone Master is so close to that amp. Like, it's probably not identical. If you put them side to side, you could probably hear the difference. But I love the way it sounds. It sounds great. It kind of breaks up the same way if you crank it up. Although, like, I hardly could ever crank up an actual deluxe reverb because it's so freaking loud. This one has a built-in attenuator on the back that you can actually bring it down. So that's that's a plus. I went from the, uh, let's see. Well, I'm not going to go all the way back. But recently, I had the Twin, which I liked, but I ended up getting rid of because it, it was just a little too loud for me. Even in the Tone Master form, bringing down the attenuator, the Twin was just too loud. Too loud and too big. For my purposes, it was too loud and too big. So I started thinking, well, maybe I would like the uh, Princeton because that just came out. But I think the Princeton is too small, okay? I think it would be loud enough, but I think it's, it's just too small generally speaking. So I said, what do I really want this amp for? Well, I want my clean amp. I want, I, I like having a clean amp that I can run with pedals if I want to. And I also like having my uh, Katana, which has like everything under the sun in it. So yeah. So what did I end up with? I thought about it really long and hard. And I said, I, I'm going to go with the Deluxe Reverb because I loved my Deluxe Reverb when I had the tube version. And I don't want a tube version because they're too loud and I don't want to deal with the maintenance of that of tubes and, and the like. Yes, that's that. have a direct out on the back um, which sounds great recorded by the way direct into a recording interface it sounds amazing um, it doesn't I can't I'm not gonna do it right now maybe in a later video I'll record something with a direct out and that'll just be in a video but right now I'm just going straight into the amp I've got the foot switch it comes with a foot switch I've got it hooked up the foot switch does reverb reverbs off you put the reverb on. You can also turn the vibrato on. I have the vibrato set right now. really aware of what these amps are which I think at this point right now I think most people who play guitar and know about amps are, are familiar with these but maybe you're not this is a completely digital emulation of a Fender Deluxe Reverb it's in the same cabinet looks identical um, all the knobs work the same actually 
the inputs and outputs are all I think they're the analog inputs that uh, that you know it's like an analog to digital converter type thing and inside the PCB board it's computer chips it's a class D digital lamp I'm not the hugest fan of that kind of stuff usually but you know what this just sounds so good it sounds so much like the real thing that unless you're comparing them side by side you're not gonna care I mean these amps are being played by major artists um, I'm into a band called Wet Leg, okay? Uh, I've watched quite a few of their live performances. There were quite a few performances where they were using the Tone Masters live on stage. They had tape over the little Tone Master logo so you couldn't tell, but I, I, I could tell that it was a Tone Master. Because in a few other videos, you could actually see the Tone Master logo. Um, Mike McCready from uh, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam, some of the guys in Pearl Jam. I think, uh, I think um, Gossard, the other guy there, uh, Mike McCready and... Uh, Scott Gosser? I know, I haven't listened to Pearl Jam in a while. But they're both, they're, um, I know Mike McCready was using the twin live because there was a lot going on around about that, that he was actually using a twin live. And I think they've been using the deluxes too. These things are being used all over the place because they just work. They work. There's barely any maintenance that needs to be done to them. And that's it, man. Um, the back, it has, uh, like I said, um, it has your foot switch input, it has your your output, it has an attenuator knob that attenuates down quite low, I'll show you. Right now, I think it's on like, it's somewhere in the middle, I can't really see it from here, but like all the way up. I've got this amp on three right now, okay? On three, in the vibrato channel, this is the actual volume of a legit deluxe reverb. That's full 22 watts. So you can bring it down. Watch, I'll bring it down in increments so you can hear. That's all the way down. The camera's probably not even picking that up. It's probably picking up the strings. So you go one click up from that. And it's actually, the, 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 the lowest setting <sighs> tends to be really low. One up is kind of like the one that I use the most, especially if I'm doing clean. Um, oh, somewhere in the middle. One always wants to know what it sounds like when you push it. All right, well. bring down the uh, thing here. Let's turn some of the swing reverb down just a little bit. I This thing can get very loud. So I'm gonna turn this up to about six or seven, because that seems to be where it distorts for most people. Six. That's freaking loud in this room, and I literally have it one click up from the lowest attenuation. I'm not even going to put it on full because it's just insanity. But let's bring this up a little. Let's get some more distortion. Bring it up to like eight. Heck, let's crank it. This is what it sounds like cranked. Now, this is kind of brutal, but... loud same setup and I'm plugged into the normal channel so you can see for yourself what the difference is as with a regular deluxe reverb on the normal channel you don't have the reverb but what's nice about the, the normal channel is the normal channel is very pedal friendly although I find the vibrato channel to be pretty pedal friendly on this amp as well um, the, the number two inputs on these, because you got one and two, the two is like, I think it's like negative six dB lower. So it's nice if you're plugging in a guitar with really hot pickups, like uh, like it sounds pretty good with my um, my Epiphone uh, 335, because that has loud pickups. 
and it brings it down but it sounds fine in the the number one input as well but i mean you can use that in that way if you wanted to most people use the uh the normal channel on a deluxe as like their pedal platform channel so that's pretty much how that works I've got some pedals over here. I don't have as many pedals as I used to because I sold a lot of my pedals in my amp journey. But I do have a Tube Screamer, which sounds kind of nice. I will show you how that Tube Screamer actually sounds. <laughs> That's with the Tube Screamer on right now. And I can give it even more grit than that if I want. Crank the tube screamer. Now, as a lot of people will say, like you could, that's why you use the normal channel because it actually takes that a little bit better. I'll show you the difference here. some ways I do find that the normal channel takes the pedals a little bit better but I actually like the brightness that the pedals have coming out of this one. And as with anything else, if you turn this down all the way, keep the amp up to like five-ish, between four and five. as good I think at that lower setting but if you want to play at night if you wanted to play the amp at night you could easily get away with playing it in lower volumes like that even with a I got a tube screamer like cranked over here basically so um I can show you how. Just give me a second here. Just need to back up the volume. It's very loud right now. Yeah, I'll put it on three. So I've got the tube screamer. That's off. giving it a little bit of a grit um let's go with this i've got my uh which i just got this not that long ago i'm gonna do some videos on this uh the boss digital delay the dd 200 that has like a million different delays in it but <laughs> style amp I, I was on this journey for a while trying to find a fender amp a fender sounding amp 
And I mean, I was getting rid of fenders to get other amps to try to get a fender sounding amp. And in the end, I gotta say, you're better off to go with something Fender because it's, it's like Fender does Fender the best. <laughs> but if you're looking for a clean amp that you can pump some pedals into and you're not going to be playing Megadeth or, you know, or Metallica, I mean, you could try, but I mean, it's not going to sound that great for those type of tones. But if you're playing a lot of like Tom Petty-esque style stuff, you know, in that vein of rock, you know, Tom Petty, John Cougar Mellencamp, like, like, like classic Southern rock, you know, just rock in general. I, I think you can do it with this amp. I honestly do. And for my purposes, it's light as hell. This thing weighs like 20 pounds. I think it's like 21 pounds or 22 pounds or something like that. It's so light. It's easy to carry around. It's loud. It can, this will cut through anything. I'm not concerned that this wouldn't cut through in a mix. Not at all. Um, in a small club, I mean, if you're playing a stadium, you could run it. I mean, you can run it direct to the board anyway from the XLR out in the back and just use this as a stage monitor. Well, if you like this kind of content, like, subscribe, uh, hit that notification bell, and you'll find out if uh, there are any new videos. You may have noticed that as a bunch of shorts have been popping up lately, I just wanted to get some shorts out there promoting my longer form videos, so that'll probably slow down after a while. I'm gonna try to get some shorts and some bits and pieces here and there. Maybe post a new short here and there. I don't know. Shorts are okay, YouTube shorts, but they don't... <sighs> There's a disconnect between short and long form content. And if you're like me and you're doing long form content, the shorts, the audience from your shorts doesn't translate over to the long form content. So there's an interesting little piece of YouTube knowledge for you. But regardless, it's good to have a little bit of both and I'm going to try to have a little bit of both. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Jay Byrne. This has been the Effects Loop. If you're in the market, you can't beat it for what it is. I mean, it's, it's it, that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for something like that, a real deluxe reverb, this is as close as you're gonna get without buying the tube version, and let me tell you, you ain't gonna be cranking up that tube version in your apartment if you live in an apartment. So at least this version, you can work around, and you can find ways to play it a little louder if you'd like to. Kick that attenuator down and enjoy it. But anyway, take care everybody. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time.